What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, we're gonna be doing a, a Q and A. Um, I had posted to our uh, Instagram and Facebook pages a few days ago that I was gonna be doing a Q and A video and let people uh, you know, post in the comments what questions they'd like answered. And we had a lot of good ones. Uh, I know I, I called this campsite Q and A and uh, I'm not campsite, I'm currently in the garage. <laughs> uh, I did want to try to shoot this at camp uh, when I was out in the Washita National Forest this weekend, but that just, uh, that never happened. Uh, we, were, we were too busy doing other things and so never got a chance to do it there. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions. We're gonna dive right in. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware, they have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. All right, the first question is from Justin Williams and asked, what's the scariest or sketchiest moment yet since you've been in the hobby? Uh, take the top two if more than one. Without a doubt, the scariest moment that I have ever had uh, doing anything related to off-roading or overlanding was mine and my wife's, then my girlfriend, very first time to Moab, Utah. We were in my, my black JKU Rubicon, and we were in Moab late July or late June, I think. We were on the Hell's Revenge Trail. There was nobody else out there. It was bizarre. Um, we, we were completely by ourselves and decided to go check out the obstacle called Hell's Gate, which is an optional line. It is a very steep, uh, a lot of it's a, a, a V, uh, slot climb up this uh, very steep slick rock face that uh, if you get the line rights a lot easier than it looks it's I mean you get a ton of traction on that slick rock so it's not like you're having to bump it and spin your tires and everything to get up it so we decided to do it um, like I said we had no spotter I had studied the line on YouTube um, you know because that's good educational you know, material, good, good way to study things is, is YouTube. Um, and so thought, thought I could handle it. And uh, I was pretty experienced, um, you know, wheeler at that point. So we, uh, we dove down into to Hell's Gate. We're coming up it. Kara was in the passenger seat. I, uh, I'm driving, no lockers on, and Kara is flying her drone at that point. So she is looking at everything on her, her drone, on her phone, on her, from the drone perspective coming down from above. I'll see if I can find that footage. And so we're, we're climbing up Hell's Gate and I didn't get far enough on the wall and slipped and slammed pretty hard on my side. And I freak out. Um, I, I absolutely freak out. I think I have damaged uh, the door or body panels on the passenger side of my Jeep. And so I am freaking out and I reach down, hit the lockers, punch it and get out. And I, my, my heart is racing so fast. I am breathing heavy. Um, I am cussing a little bit because <laughs> I'm just that freaked out. And the whole time my wife is laughing her head off. I mean, she is just laughing like crazy, but I thought I had damaged my Jeep. Turns out my, my rock rails is what caught us 
on the wall and saved my Jeep from any damage. And um, so, you know, it was needless worry, but it was still, I mean, when you are climbing up something as steep as Hell's Gate and you slip and hit, uh, it'll get your heart going. And uh, it, it, that was definitely my scariest slash sketchiest moment uh, that I have experienced. Next question, we've got uh, Brian Frazier. Love being on two wheels, just easy cruising. I assume that means motorcycle. Uh, wondering if the Washtenaw National Forest would be a good place to bring a 4x4 truck and set up a base camp, then do some gravel road dirt biking and pick up and move camp in a couple days. Um, yes, absolutely. The Washtenaw National Forest would be perfect for that. I, I, I think of all the places I've been, that's probably one of the best places for that. Bunch of great camps on the Washtenaw National Forest. Easy dirt roads, beautiful scenery. Um, I think that would be a killer trip for you. So go for it. Uh, Jose Lopez says, any plans for Alaska? They can make an awesome overlanding trip. Yes, definitely plans for Alaska. It is high on my list of places to get to. Uh, the thing with Alaska is, I think to do it right, you really need a month because um, you got the long travel to get up there. Um, then Alaska is just so big. Um, I mean, it is just so massive. I, I think you really need a month to do it right. And with us, I mean, we've still got kids in high school, so that's we can't take a month away and go do that. So in, in three years when we are on the road full time and you know doing full time travel, um, Alaska will be high on the list. Probably that first summer we'll, we'll go to Alaska. Um, so definitely, I think it's gonna be epic. Will Lampert says, uh, when are you planning on finishing the KAT? Um, and would it be possible to receive an invitation? Definitely plan on finishing the KAT. We've only done about a third of it. Uh, we did just over 300 miles of what's um, a thousand mile Kentucky Adventure Tour. Um, that was a trip that I did with my friend Brad uh, when he had just started his company, Go Explore USA. Uh, actually, this, I was out in the Washtaws this past weekend with him on his first official Go Explore USA trip and it went fantastic. So um, if anyone's new to this overlanding thing and you want kind of a, an easy way to, to get acclimated to it and to learn the ropes, go check out GoExploreUSA.com. I'll put the link in the description because Brad just does a fantastic job. But that was kind of his trial, his, his test run to, to see how it goes uh, with us who are his friends. And so we actually talked about the KAT this weekend. And so, yes, we will definitely finish the KAT. I will finish that with Brad. Um, since he started that, I want to finish it with him. And that being his trip, um, he would have to extend that invitation, um, not me. So um, that, would be, that would not be a trip that I could extend an invitation to because it wouldn't be one that I would be leading. David Davidson, how long did it take you to get completely comfortable flying your drone? Um, there's still sometimes I'm not comfortable <laughs> flying it. Um, I mean, it just, as with anything, you, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. But in the case of flying a drone, the more comfortable you get, sometimes the more often you crash. <laughs> and my current drone, which is Mavic Air 2S, I've, I've crashed it twice. Actually, I've crashed it once right after I got it. Uh, that's in the, one of my, uh, my second New Mexico video from last fall. Um, I, 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 sh I, I crashed it into a tree and you see me trying to get it out of the tree in my pajamas. Um, and the second time it actually crashed itself. Um, it was in follow me mode and it found a tree limb that it just drove right into. So it's been crashed twice. And because the Air 2S does not have side sensors like the larger Mavic 3 Pro has, um, I still get nervous when I'm around trees and flying sideways um, just because I don't want to crash it again. That's, uh, that's not cheap to do, and sometimes it's impossible to, to recover. Um, but, I mean, as with anything, the more, the more you fly, the more comfortable you get with certain maneuvers and stuff. I actually, when I first got it, I would drive it around my neighborhood and, you know, have, I would have my wife drive around the neighborhood. I would follow or I would drive and have it active track me just to see how well that works. So I, I practiced in my neighborhood before getting out into remote areas. Next question is from Robert Vickers. Are you considering investing in the Starlink setup for use on your trips? Would be great to get your opinion on it as a user. Uh, definitely. Uh, actually, if Kara had her way, we would already have it. 
I just can't justify, I mean, since we still live at home and we're not traveling full time, uh, we don't travel on long-term trips as much as I'd like, uh, just because, like I said, we got kids in high school. Um, so I don't, I, it's not something that I would use in a, in a work situation right now. I'm not editing while I'm on the road and trying to upload while I'm on the road uh, very often. So right now it would be cool to have, but you know, it would be for being able to access Facebook from camp and streaming YouTube videos at camp. Um, you know, if, if that's what you like, that's go for it. But um, I, I still like to be able to be disconnected. But when we hit the road full time in three years, absolutely we will have Starlink because I will be in remote places and working in those remote places, editing video, trying to upload. And instead of trying to having to go into town and you know find a coffee shop, I can do it in whatever cool remote location that I'm in. Um, I did get to experience Starlink when I was with my friend Rob from Revere Overland. When he and I were in Idaho together, we used his at camp. It's, I show it in that video. I was able to upload that my next video that I've been working on. I uploaded it from camp um, and it worked, it worked really well. So highly recommend. Um, if, if you have a use for it and can justify, you know, the, the I don't wanna pay 150 bucks a month for something that I, I'm not using that much. Next uh, question from John Filto. Uh, best place to overland in a non Rubicon gladiator, no lockers, looking on planning a vacation. Man, I, don't let the fact that you don't have a Rubicon uh, slow you down. There's so many places, 90% of the places that I go, you could do in a, you know, in a, a non Rubicon. So don't think you, you I've, I rarely use my lockers. Uh, so it's, it's not, uh, it's definitely not a requirement to get to so many places. But I would say if you've never, um, you know, if, if you've just got this and maybe you're new into this, go to Colorado, go to Ure, the Ure, Colorado, Silverton area, and run those trails. I mean, that's like that to me, that's just the iconic Colorado experience. And truth be told, every one of those trails, every one of those passes, they're county roads, they're graded. Uh, we see minivans on them all the time but they're just beautiful and they're stunning. There are some optional lines you can take just to have fun. Imogene has some optional stuff. Um, Poughkeepsie Gulch, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing Poughkeepsie Gulch without lockers, uh, at least the wall. You can do Poughkeepsie, but take the bypass away from the extreme section. Uh, but it, just go to Ure, do Engineer Pass, do the Alpine Loop, um, do all the Badge of Honor trails, Imogene, Ofer, um, uh, engineer Poughkeepsie, Black Bear, uh, definitely do Black Bear. It's not a hard trail. It's, it's not really technical. There's a couple nice little rocky sections, but it's, it's not a technical trail. It's, it's rated difficult because of the, um, the potential catastrophic effects if you aren't paying attention. From a driving and technical standpoint, uh, it's not it's not that difficult. It's just really intimidating because if you make a mistake, probably game over, um, but killer trail. But definitely go to Uray, Colorado, the Silverton area, run those trails, super easy. And if that's your first experience, it will be a trip of a lifetime. I still remember my first time to that area and I'll never forget it. Let's see, Harley Martindale, any plans to overland slash wheel outside of the US? Um, oh, definitely. Um, Baja is, high on my list. We've actually got an open invitation from Marco to, um, to go to Baja. So might try to make that happen in 2023. Um, so we'll see. And if, if, if I'm going to go to, to Baja and I've got an invitation from Marco to go with him, you betcha I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, so Marco, I don't know if you're watching this video, but you know, game on. We talked about it at uh, Overland Expo in Colorado and we're going to try to make that happen uh, for sure. But Baja, uh, Canada, I, I want to go to Canada and uh, experience that. Sean with the story till now, he actually invited me. If you've been watching his latest series on the Alexander McKenzie trail, he invited me to go on that trip with him and I just couldn't make it happen because uh, the ex Colorado Expo kind of overlapped with that time frame, and we just couldn't make that happen. That's a long drive um, up from, from here to Canada, but definitely want to spend a considerable amount of time in Canada once we are traveling full time and want to get up there before then just to go hang out with Sean and see those amazing places that he has up there in British Columbia. So 
Um, as far as, you know, outside, you know, the, the North American continent, I, I don't know. Um, I know like Expedition Overland, they're currently in what, Norway or something like that. I, I don't know about putting my vehicles on ships and uh, that, that sounds really cool, but that's, that's way too far ahead for me to, 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 to know if that's something. Um, but Mexico, Canada, absolutely. Uh, Brian Clark, how long does it usually take to plan trips, routes, and schedule? Uh, I assume you're scheduled out at least 12 months. Uh, no, uh, definitely not scheduled out at least 12 months. I, you know, with the exception of things like expos that have dates, my trips, um, they may be scheduled loosely. You know, we know next summer we'll take a trip somewhere. We know next spring we're going back to Moab. Uh, after Easter Jeep Safari at some point, we're going back to, to Moab to run uh, Pritchett Canyon again. If you watch that video, broke my goo joint on the Gladiator right after I bought it in some freak of nature on Rocker Knocker. But Kara, now that she's got her Wrangler built up uh, the way it is, she wants to run Pritchett Canyon in her Jeep. So we will take her Jeep, we will take my Gladiator because I want revenge. Uh, I need redemption for Pritchett Canyon. And then my friends are going to come with us. Uh, Sean from the story till now, he's coming with us in his gladiator. And uh, so we, we know that. But other than that, I mean, I don't like this, this previous trip to Colorado. We knew the dates, but honestly, I didn't start planning it until a month out. And that was planning a route. What takes the longest for me is finding potential campsites. You know, if it's just me and Kara and we're just out, you know, just the two of us, pretty much any campsite will do because it, we don't have to have a large one. But when I'm wheeling with my friends and we've got six to eight rigs, you know, with us, that's a little more challenging to find campsites large enough to, to hold that many rigs comfortably. So I will spend a lot of time going over my route in Google satellite imagery and, you know, I trying to identify potential campsites and have a lot of them marked out um, as possible uh, campsites for us to stay in. Uh, just because of the logistics of it. So that's what that's what takes the, the longest time for me in planning it out. And most of the time I'm out exploring. So I'm just picking four service roads or, or BLM roads. And I'm just looking at the train going, oh, that looks cool. And let's go there. And so I can I can lay out my route pretty fast, but it's it's finding the campsites that takes the longest. And definitely not planned out 12 months in advance. Shane McCollum says, what's your thoughts uh, when the trail rating system isn't what you thought it would be? You know, say something's rated moderate and halfway through you think, wow, who said this was moderate or vice versa? Um, like when I was, he's referencing Pritchett Canyon here, took out my tail lights so I didn't bang them on a rock and broke my front U-joint. Um, have you had to use tire plugs, first aid kits, my radio for assistance, that sort of thing. Uh, lots of good questions there. Um, I take, I, I just know that, you know, the trail rating system, that's all subjective. That's someone's opinion, whoever decided to rate that trail. Um, like I said, Black Bear Pass, it's an easy trail to drive. It, it, it's a county road, but the consequences of it are significant. So that's why it has a difficult rating. And there are a few spots. If you don't know what you're doing, it's easy to, uh, to get off camber, um, and, and, and pitch over and flop on your side, uh, depending on the type of rig that you're driving there. So that there's one section that I would say is, is challenging depending on your rig and your experience level. Um, but I just know, I mean, they're, they're subjective. What's easy for someone may be difficult for another. What's easy in my Gladiator is going to be different for someone in a stock Wrangler. Um, you know, so it, there's a lot of variables there. So I, I always take it as a grain of salt, but it's usually a, a general, you know, a, a general starting point for what a trail is going to be like. Holy Cross that we just ran, that's rated difficult. Um, it was difficult. Uh, that, that, that was a solid, solid difficult rating there. Pritchett Canyon, very difficult. Um, definitely rated very difficult. And I'll, I'll also study, if I know I'm going to be running a hardcore trail like a Pritchett Canyon, like a cliffhanger, like a Holy Cross, um, I will study videos on them just to kind of see what those obstacles are like and get an idea for, for what I'm getting myself into. Um, let's see, I had to use tire plugs, first aid kit. Honestly, no. Um, I mean, I've had to use band-aids 
from my first aid kit before. Um, but I've, I've never blown a tire on a trail. We've encountered some people that, that have, and we helped, you know, plug their tire, that sort of thing. So definitely always carry a, a tire repair kit with you. Um, I have never had to use my, uh, any radio for assistance because something just got that bad. We were actually running uh, Radical Hill uh, our first day, first full day in Colorado. I didn't get it on video, but I talked about it in the video. There were a couple um, adventure riders on motorcycles coming down Radical Hills. We were coming up it, and there were three of them. Two of them got impatient and just floored it and went straight down the mountain, which I don't recommend because he's going off trail that's illegal. Uh, but one guy uh, wanted to be respectful, and he was trying to make his way around us. And it's very, very narrow on Radical Hill. And in doing so, his back tire of his motorcycle slipped off, and he slipped and fell down the hill into a hole. And Kara radioed to me, um, and so we all ran down there and, and helped him get up, checked on him to make sure he was okay. He was fine. But that was the most intense uh, mishap or accident that we've encountered on a trail uh, so far. We, we've been very lucky. Uh, I will say that. We have been very lucky in our experiences and all the trips we've done. Uh, Chris Williams, do you still love it? Sometimes taking something you like to do and turning it into a have to do kills the very thing you enjoyed. Um, I've enjoyed watching our success. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, do I still love it? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it was been just over a year ago that I was able to to start doing YouTube full time, quit my day job, and you know, went all in with this. And I still love it. I still wake up every morning and just am floored that I get to do this um, for a living. It's it's that old saying, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, and that is definitely true. For this i love the adventures i love the filming of the adventures i love the editing of the adventures and um i, I very much still love it the only time it becomes a chore is um, sometimes when i've you know got a piece of gear uh, that was sent to me to review um, sometimes i just have so many and i just need to get that i just need to to buckle down and knock them out and uh you know get those videos done and so um, that's the only time this ever feels like you know, work is when I just have to knock out a gear review video type of thing. So, uh, but I, I still love that too. So it's not, it's not bad. My friend Lee Gibson wants to know advantages and disadvantages of using a trailer as a base camp versus uh, using the rooftop tent. Um, I mean, there's, there's places for both. There's definitely place, there, there's pros and cons for each setup. Um, hauling a trailer around, there's obviously trails that either you shouldn't go on or just going to be a lot more difficult to go on pulling a trailer. So that limits your mobility. Um, having a rooftop tent limits your ability to, you know, really set up a base camp and leave camp behind just to go out and wheel for a day. So that's why we have both. We, we have rooftop tents on our vehicles. We have the, the Conqueror trailer and we're actually taking the Conqueror uh, tomorrow. We leave for um, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan for CORE, the Keweenaw Overland Adventure Retreat. And so we're, we're taking the Conqueror for that because it's, it's, it's a base camp. We'll have the Conqueror at a rendezvous in the Ozarks. Awesome for that uh, because it, it's a base camp setting. So it's, that is much better and much more comfortable than, you know, having to put your tent up and down each day. But I will say, you know, I've, I've done events with my rooftop tent, taking it up and down each day. And, you know, if you have the right tent, if you have a hard shell rooftop tent, that makes life so much easier than if you have a soft shell because they're so much faster to set up and they're less, much less of a pain in the butt to put away than a soft shell rooftop tent. So uh, definitely have their pros and cons, but if I, if I couldn't have one, I would not have the trailer and I would do just the rooftop tent because I don't want anything limiting my mobility. And it's, since I have a hard shell, it's not that big of a deal. I can set up my tent in you know two minutes. I can put it away in three and that's not that big of a deal. Don, do you have an easy way to clean dishes after you cook? <laughs> I'm not the right person to ask that. My, uh, my, my means of cooking dishes after a meal is just water. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like using soap at camp. Uh, I don't know, just because I don't. I'm not gonna get all environmental and all that kind of crap on you. Um, I, I just don't, it's, it's more of a mess. So I, I honestly just use water. I will 
you know, give paper towels, rinse off my plates if I've got something greasy on it. Um, like say I cooked a steak and it's got good fatty pieces in it and that sort of thing. Um, I will boil some water. Usually when I'm cleaning out my cast iron skillet that I cooked whatever it was in, I will boil water and put that on the, the paper towel and use that to get all the grease off of it. Um, but I, 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 I'm not very good. I will we'll usually, you know, just give it a really good wipe down with, with water and paper towels and wait till I get home and throw them in the dishwasher. <laughs> so just being real and honest with you. Not the best person to ask about uh, clean dishes. But that, I would say that is definitely the easiest way, just water and paper towels. Adam Scott wants to know, why do Robert's headlights in the Forerunner flash all the time? Well, they don't in person. That is a video thing. Uh, it's a frequency thing. Headlights, especially LEDs, operate at a certain frequency or certain hertz, and video cameras record at certain hertz. You can actually change it from, I think, 50 and 60 hertz within the camera settings. And I don't, I just, I don't even know what settings my camera's on. I just use the defaults for that sort of thing. Um, but if it, it, it's that conflict of frequency that makes it look like they're, they're flashing. They're not flashing in real life, and they do not flash on the trail. It is just in the videos. So that's it, it's a camera thing. Um, Backroads Bound, how many videos would you say y'all made before the editing process became quicker and easier? And does Goose need godparents? I'll have to let Kara answer the Goose godparent question. I'm sure there will be a long, lengthy uh, application and intensive interview process before that would could be nailed down. Um, but how many videos? I don't know. Um, I mean, at like flying the drone, the, the more you do, the more faster you get, uh, the more comfortable you get with it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, and it, that's, I can't really answer that question because I had a video editing background. Um, I, I did video editing um, in a previous job, so I already had that skill set. Um, but I mean, the more you do it, the more it's going to be a, a process. The more you do it, the better you'll get, the quicker you'll get that sort of thing. Trail Chicken Overland wants to know, what do you and Kara miss about the WK2 Trailhawk? I do miss that Grand Cherokee. Um, I, I really do sometimes. It was just such a comfortable, long touring vehicle. It was really comfortable on, on the trails too. And incredibly capable for, I mean, the type, I mean, Fully independent suspension, no solid axles anywhere. Man, that rig blew me away every time Kara drove it. Um, she did such a good job with it. But what I miss most about the Grand Cherokee are the, the air-conditioned seats. Um, those, were, those were real nice. And I honestly thought my Gladiator came with them. I just assumed because that was a 2018 Grand Cherokee and mine's a 2021 Gladiator. So I figured in three years that was just kind of part of the nice package. Um, and it actually, the first hot day, I was looking for the button on my Gladiator to find the, the cooled seats option in the, in the menu and I couldn't find it. And I realized that my Gladiator didn't have it and no Gladiator or Wrangler has it. Um, and that made me sad. So the, the cooled seats is what I missed the most. Uh, my buddy Cotty Wampel Overland, why aren't you and Kara coming with us to Maine? And Kara replied, good question. Uh, it's just timing, bro. It's just timing. Um, Maine's another one of those long, long, long trips. So y'all live a lot closer to Maine than, than we do. Um, so that, that's why. Uh, Small Life Dreams, can you do a camp in India? If so, please message me, happy to camp. Dude, I, I, I would love to go to India. If you can guarantee me that I can see a tiger, um, a, a, an Indian elephant, and a king cobra, um, I, I I'll be there in a heartbeat. India looks gorgeous and beautiful. I, I, I would love to go to India, uh, but I do want to see a tiger and an Indian elephant and a king cobra in the wild. Yeah, sign me up. What's your favorite camp recipe? Yours or someone else's makes. Uh, I mean, I'm a sucker for a good steak at camp. Cooked on a cast iron skillet and at the, with a view, I, I'm a sucker for that. So, but that's easy. My friend Nathan, obviously, I. When, he, when he's coming on a trip and he's cooking the hibachi, we've shown it in a couple of videos, his camp hibachi, I love that. I, I love it when he does that. And um, gosh, we just, I mean, we, we've done so many. Um, we were out with Brad and Regina uh, from Trail Recon. Uh, his video of that trip just came out. Mine's two weeks away. Um, Regina made 
she is just a master of the Omnia oven. And so she made some, some cinnamon muffins one morning from scratch. She made a, a blondie brownie cookie thing one night for dessert. Um, she whipped up some of this, this feta and tomato uh, and green onion kind of dip salad thing. And we've been making it ever since experiencing that. It was delicious. Um, we, sh we showed that in the video. Um, but I, any meal is better at camp, I, anything. You cook a hot dog at camp, it's gonna taste better than, than most things at home because you're at camp. Little Red Mike also wants to know, uh, any plans to host any events? Uh, we do, we host two events a year uh, for our patron supporters. Uh, we do a, an event in the fall and an event in the spring. It's a base camp weekend. We invite 15 of them to come out and we, it's, there's no fee. We, just we run trails we base we stay at camp all weekend to hang out get to know each other that sort of thing so those are the only two events that we host um like i said i was on this weekend was with my buddy brad with go explore usa uh i get asked all the time if i would ever do guided trips like that and the answer is no uh, because you have to deal with uh, insurance and permitting from the forest service and i don't want to mess with that um, that's just hoops that I don't want to jump through and I don't have to deal with charging people for that sort of thing. So, um, no, I, no, I, I don't have any desire to, to host an event and, and, and do that. Rob Kroppa, Rob K. Kroppa. Uh, these are all, in, these are Instagram, so weird names. Uh, best trail routes in the Ozarks if you only had a weekend. Uh, hands down, the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail. Uh, I would pick days one, two, and three, which I think just gets you some of the best of the Ozarks and start on Friday with day one. End on, Saturday, end on Sunday, um, day three at the Oart Cafe. And if I just had a weekend, that's what I'd do. Absolutely, hands down. All, he also wants to know, what was the, what was the Overland related purchase you regretted the most? Um, man, I'm trying to think, that's a hard one. I'm, kind of, I'm looking around my garage. Um, I, you know what, probably this one. Probably this right here. Um, it's the, the Lifesaver um, jerry can holder. It purifies water. We bought this at the Moore Expo back in the spring. I was, first of all, blown away at how expensive these things are. Like, uh, like shocked at how expensive this thing was. So, um, and, and we haven't used it yet because we don't go out long enough to have to worry about water because um, we can take water. My neighbor drives a semi. He's backing up. I'm waiting for the beeping to stop. There we go. Um, so uh, we, we haven't used it yet because we don't travel off grid long enough that we're in a situation to filter water. We will be. So we, we will use this eventually, but I haven't used it yet and we've had it since April. So this, it was ridiculously expensive and we did buy it, it's not sponsored. Um, but I'm sure we will use it eventually. But that's, that's, this is probably the few hundred dollars that I regret spending the most just because just it hasn't been used. Next question, um, ZZ Martinez. Um, best spot in the Ozarks for family camp, easy, moderate access. Um, Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, day two, or day one, end of day one, start of day two, uh, is all along the North Fork, Illinois Bayou, which is north of Russellville, Arkansas. Uh, north Fork, Illinois Bayou, there's a ton of great camps along North Fork on the, on the water, some big ones that are easy to access. Um, all those campsites are in the OOAT route file, but at the beginning of, beginning of day two, end of day, uh, one on that stretch of water. There's a bunch of campsites there. Highly recommend those uh, for a, a, a family outing in the in the Ozarks. Those are those are beautiful. Kids love it. The stream, fantastic. Uh, my wife wants to know. Uh, her Instagram handle is Wondersloth83. Are you getting the new purple Jeep? No. Um, I, purple's my favorite color. If they came out with a purple Gladiator, that'd be real tempting but it'd be a lot cheaper for me to just wrap this one purple 
than to buy a new one because um, there's not any new compelling features that would make me need to, you know, trade this one in on a new one. And I've got this one pretty dialed in, so I want to keep it for a while. Uh, so definitely not. Uh, she also asks, this is a loaded question, whose Jeep is better, yours or Kara's? And I would say, yes, they're, they're both better than everyone else's. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the whole Wrangler versus Gladiator debate that I see. And I, I think from a rock crawling standpoint, hardcore wheeling standpoint, Wrangler all day. All day, every day versus every other vehicle on the planet. Um, from an overlanding perspective, and even hardcore overlanding, um, from an overlanding perspective, Gladiator, without question above every other vehicle on the planet. Um, I just, I mean, you can just, you can do more from an overlanding perspective and take more gear and live more comfortably and it's more comfortable on the, the dirt roads, it's more comfortable on the, the bumpy trails than a Wrangler is just because longer wheelbase. And I think I have shown pretty successfully that you can do some hardcore trails in a well-built Gladiator. So, um, and every trail has its pros and cons. I mean, there are trails, like when we did Hell's Revenge uh, last summer after I got the Gladiator, when I, before I broke my U-joint on Pritchett Canyon, um, go watch that Hell's Revenge video. The Gladiator made everything on Hell's Revenge super easy. Um, Hell's Gate, super easy. I mean, my friend Robert, I let him drive it up there after almost slipping his forerunner on it. Uh, he drove it up there and said, man, that was boring. And, and it was. Mickey's Hot Tub, getting in was kind of a challenge, but getting out, I made it out easier than everybody else because longer wheelbase, my front tires were already up over the lip and just, boop, climbed right out. Um, escalator, my GoPro messed up on that one, so I didn't get it. But I wouldn't take my Wrangler on Escalator because you gotta get that obstacle just right or you, you pitch and you, you flop inside the, the hole on escalator. The Gladiator with the longer wheelbase, just boop, boop, boop. It was no drama, super easy. It was awesome. Uh, but there's some, Pritchett Canyon, where getting that back end, is, it's, it, it's, it favors a Wrangler. Um, cliffhanger, Gladiator did better than all the other rigs with us that day because longer wheelbase climbed up things better. So there's no perfect rig, it's just what what areas do you want to compromise on? So, you know, if I had to pick, you know, Kara's Wrangler or my Gladiator, I'm going to pick my Gladiator. If Kara had to pick her Wrangler or my Gladiator, she's going to pick her Wrangler because that's what she likes better. Uh, Jay Nelson 155 says, great videos on the Colorado trip. My question is, I don't see you carrying many tools. Uh, been building rigs for years um, and I guess breaking rigs for years. Uh, what do you do when something's wrong? Yeah, I carry I carry a full tool set. Every tool I've ever used to to work on my Jeep in the garage, I have with me. Every socket, you know, every every wrench, whatever, uh, so I can fully work on my Jeep on the trail if needed. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. Mostly wheel hubs. Uh, that's the, probably the one thing that we've ever changed the most on is is a wheel hub going bad on you. Um, but yeah, I always carry my tools. All, all the time. It's if you've watched my latest everyday, my latest Gladiator EDC video that came out, I think last Tuesday, um, I talk about my tools in that one. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. That's all the questions. Shockingly, there was no questions about my hair. Um, that I usually expect that because it's kind of low hanging fruit. But uh, yeah, no questions about my hair. So cool. Um, but. Thank you so much for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this. I want, let me know in the comments if you want this to be kind of a regular thing, because uh, I enjoy doing this. So maybe once a month, maybe every other month. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like this to be a regular type of segment on the channel, um, yeah, because I, I think it's helpful. And you know, answering questions, a lot of people were like, oh yeah, I wondered that too. So anyway, let me know. Uh, if you would, give the video a like. Um, it, it helps the, the YouTube mystery algorithm thing. So give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I know 75% of the people who watch our videos are not subscribed. So go look, and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Um, do us a favor, we're trying to get to 75,000 by the end of the year, and the end of the year is getting close. Um, so I need your help. 
And if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, uh, go check out our Patreon. We do special events, like I mentioned earlier. We um, do uh, special content. Uh, we share all of our GPS data and merch discounts, that sort of thing, to our Patreon supporters. So we, we, we really appreciate um, that special group of people. And uh, for our merchandise, which, brand new shirt, brand new shirt, uh, Jeep, because no one likes to take bypasses. Um, shopoverlandapparel.com. For my Toyota lovers, for my Toyota fans, my friend Amy with Lady on Toyotas, she has her version of this shirt that says Toyota because nobody likes breaking down. So you can get both of those at shopoverlandapparel.com. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.